Scorpio! Welcome to your 2018 overview for the year, tarot reading. It's Rena here. And um, as I record this, I'm also going to be recording a 2018 love reading called New Year, New Love. And that's going to be on Vimeo. And um, there will be a link below. I have uh, started the those readings and I've had a little bit of technical difficulties because, you know, we are in a Mercury retrograde after all as I record this. So uh, if you see a link below for that, that means it's ready to go. Otherwise, it will be coming at some point. And uh, th this is a spread that I devised which is always fun. I think it's good to create your own spreads so that you can uh, feel that you're directing the kind of um, things you want for your reading. And I'll, I'll explain what each, um, each position means when I get there. like this table in order to do things you know um, like this I have to I'll have to swing around to show you some of these other cards I still have some to lay out and I I decided to do like a total of 18 cards to keep in the spirit of it being 2018 these up. I can show you as I'm doing it. <laughs> really not. Okay. Yeah, and I'm also having a few issues with my um, holding up my camera to begin with on my tripod so I'm gonna to have to let these go let this go and just let it let the chips fall where they may okay so the top row are past influences that uh, maybe you have come into 2018 with that in some cases they may be unfinished business loose ends uh, situations that need to be dealt with or situations that you're still kind of dealing with. One of them is represented by the Six of Swords. So this is a card you may have relocated in 2017 and you're still uh, getting used to your new lo location, your new environs. It can also be getting going away from a relationship that was rocky and choosing to Choosing peace, that's a card of choosing peace. And uh, the fallout from that, the feeling of maybe missing that person but not missing the drama. We have another card that's associated with expansion and even relocation. The Three of Wands can be a card of travel. But with the Six of Wands, there is that element of there being some kind of... Um, Something that was creating a lot of conflict and you wanting to get away from that. So with the Three of Wands, there can also be this sense of like a um, 
expansion of your career in some way and that can be very that can be indicative that your career is going very well and you have the ability to kind of move your operations somewhere else and um, things like that so there may be like a lot of good stuff happening for you professionally another card that represents the past of the king of cups if this is a person it would be an older male who is emotionally available emotionally mature caring this could be a boss who is like a father to you this could be your father water sign uh, male cancer scorpio scorpio pisces father of your child perhaps um this is a person you you have met that you uh, that's why you left your other partner and you're now with somebody who is more sensitive to your needs the the card i could have read these in order they might have uh, worked out that way because this is a card of receiving good news of having a new relationship that is very stimulating for you in some way so that could connect with that king of cups again these are past influences and it, this could also be the start of a new venture if this is your own business and so you come into 2018 with a lot of good stuff now some of this may be related to the fact that jupiter is in your sign scorpio so that might be why you have a lot of good stuff going on in the first place now let's look at 2018 themes okay and the reason that i like to just have themes is it keeps it very open-ended when you have something okay this is going to happen that's going to happen then it limits it to just one narrow area one thing that you have to remember not just with my readings but with anybody's uh, tarot readings especially is that they are supposed to be for every single person of a sign that's that's actually absurd what you can do and what i always did when i used to watch these types of videos myself is to think about your own life and how this connects to your life if there's any synchronicity then that makes sense uh one of the reasons that i think it's it's um difficult sometimes to get through to people is because they really take things literally and even in personal readings, you have to apply it to your own life. If it doesn't seem like it fits to anything going on in your life, then obviously there's some kind of a disconnect. And um, astrology is much more, you know, based on actual timing, events, and even that, when it's on YouTube, is going to be very generalized. So keep that in mind, because I do get people that ask me, oh, well, you know, is it this and that? It's, it's, um, it may it may resonate with you it may not but at least when we talk about themes it keeps it open-ended okay so one of them is a theme about financial security um especially being being good at managing your money um you ha have just gone through a transit of Saturn in your second house in the sign of Sagittarius, which is your house of earned income. A lot of times when people have this transit, they may come out of it if, they're, um, if they were savvy enough to really take advantage of being very good at seeing how their money can work best for them. It's not about how much money you make, it's, it's how much you, you know, what you do with it. You can make a lot of money and squander it. You can make what is considered lower middle class wages and really be so clever with money that you end up amassing quite a fortune. And there have been stories of people that, you know, were there was some lady and I think she had she had um gotten like a million dollars and she was like a um washing clothes by hand i don't know what they call those like scrubbing clothes like in the deep south in america this woman and they had no idea she had all this money she was just like this humble uh, woman like um 
a laundress. I don't know if they call those things anymore. But she was doing it by hand or something. I don't know. But she was doing people's laundry. Let's put it that way. And when she died, she left it to some, like, university or something. And she had, like, a million dollars or something. Okay. So, um... That's, that can be very good. Um, uh, the Four of Pentacles is also a card of somebody who is actively doing that. Now, if you do this for a living, maybe you will have um, an, a, a job offer. You will be working in this field like an, as an accountant, something in that, in that area, if that's something that you do. Next card is the Queen of Cups. Card of heightened intuition, of course, with the Jupiter and Scorpio. We're looking at a water sign. So Jupiter is like uh, steroids and it blows up or expands whatever it comes in contact with. In this case, a water sign like Jupiter or like uh, Scorpio. So for people who actually are Scorpios, I would imagine that you would have that sense of um, increased intuition. And with that four of Pentacles, it could even involve something with um, investments, perhaps, where you know, like, what is a good time. And, and I'm talking, obviously, from my experience. I'm not in the stock market, but, but in America, the stock markets are doing very well right now. So if you live there, you might say, wow. And, you, and here's another card of, like, being psychic. Now, this could also speak to those Scorpios who have wanted to get more involved in spiritual matters. Maybe you have wanted to go to some kind of retreat that you can, maybe like a, one of those yoga teacher training things that they have in Bali and these beautiful environment where you can, it's like having a vacation, but you're also doing something that can be practical. That would be wonderful for you guys. Because one of the things, too, that I should mention is that with Saturn now moving into your third house, you're going to, the third house can be training. And with Saturn, it's getting this training that can benefit you for years to come. Because Saturn will only be in this house for the next two and a half years. So it does uh, come in 30-year cycles. So you can really do practical things but at the same time if it's in a beautiful location it can be like a vacation but it's it's the best type of vacation because it's a productive one and then the last card is the full card which i really like because a lot of times scorpio people oops <laughs> Jeez. tend to um tend to be people who do have some emotional baggage, who do kind of like ruminate about the past and resent people that have done them wrong. Um, because you're a fixed sign, you're a water sign, so memory is very, is very like um, vivid for you, memories. So this can be a time of you really cutting the past, cutting ties to the past in some way, especially with those cards at the top, the six of swords and the three of wands, that could be you leaving an area. Maybe you've lived in one area your whole life, like your hometown area, and you really want to see the world. You want to see more than your own backyard. And the, the Three of Wands is a card of expansion. So it's like if you stay in this little area um, and you never, like, venture out, you may be kind of trapped in the past with people, places, and things that remind you of who you used to be, not who you are right now. <laughs> Speaking of people, places, and things, this, this uh, row at the bottom here is... 2018 people, places, and things. Okay, the Six of Wands can be... So this is kind of like outer influences. This can be a 
you having some kind of accolades for some reason um, that have to do with your career especially so that could be featured for you a lot of like recognition um, in 2018 for whatever it is that you do and let's put that there we have the ten of swords which can be a card of some kind of betrayal now I would say as an entity this could be a person maybe this is a swords person who is very problematic this person either resurfaces or yeah it would probably be something along those lines this would be either an Aquarius and I know some of you um, Scorpios tend to go for Aquarians it's so funny, you know, I started this reading in the morning and there's been so much noise. It's unbelievable. That's one of my goals in 2018 is to find a place to live where I can actually record in peace without being interrupted like this. But anyway, um, people, places, and things involve with the, the swords card, somebody who may have betrayed you that they come back into your life. If they're literally a swords person, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra person. And, you know, thinking of the, the first row again, perhaps it is connected to that six of swords. Maybe you left a swords person. And, you know, sometimes people, they cheat or they take somebody for granted and they realize after they leave if they are the ones that leave now I feel like you left so that wouldn't necessarily be your situation but for any person that has had somebody take them for granted they may find out the hard way what they lost and you are already gone you're already like you've moved on with your life The hangman. This could be a time when, uh, again, this could have to do with Pisces. This is a card associated with Neptune. But this can be a card where that's uh, kind of like it's not really a people, place, or thing, but it's a state of being where you may find that you have to surrender more than you are used to surrendering. And from what I understand, we're going to have a lot of retrogrades after the first few months of the year. So if that's the case, there may be a lot of holdups, a lot of times when we are forced to put things on ice. And that doesn't mean that you have to give up on anything, but simply that you may have to just put things off for another time. And also just emotionally because you are a sign I think of, of Scorpio people they can be kind of obsessive and hold on to ideas things that you want to do and when the universe isn't cooperating you may double down and try to just really exert your will over the universe it doesn't work like that that creates more resistance so you may have to learn fully how to how to surrender and again, these two cards probably would be a great year to start a meditation practice if you don't have one already. Then the last card with this is the Ten of Wands. I've already done a Pisces video. I think I got the same thing for, for this position. So you may be working a lot uh, in 2018, Scorpio, to the point where you feel very overwhelmed again <laughs> meditation is good for that but that could bode very well for your professional life I do see some cards that suggest professional expansion so let us look at some of the pitfalls and I'm going to I think what I'm going to do is what I did for Pisces today I'm going to just put these away and then bring out the cards that I have already picked that are on the side. Because until I get this 
tripod situation straightened out. It's going to be a bit, it's just better to go like this. Okay, so the pitfalls. One of them is any kind of fighting, uh, aggressive behavior, overly, overly competitive attitude in your workplace. Um, because I see a lot of career success for you, you may be in an environment where you feel like the only way to maintain your success is to step over other people. You may not know this, Scorpio, but you are not only ruled by Pluto, you're ruled by Mars. And Aries is a sign that is ruled by Mars. And that tendency to try to do whatever it takes to get ahead in terms of like competing is really not understanding how you came to get where you are and how you can maintain it. You have to believe that there's enough to go around, which our society doesn't teach us. Our society teaches us that we have to compete. I, I hear it like in a very benign way. You know, they say, talking about children, the American children must be competitive globally with other children. We're not here to compete with other people globally, locally. We're here to serve others and we're here to also expand ourselves, expand our consciousness, expand our sense of possibility and to actually do more for ourselves. At least that's what I believe. And so none of that has to do with competing with other people. That's a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality, which the Five of Wands, I think, represents. Now, of course, this could also be in personal relationships. Um, but whatever, we're not here to compete with others. And also, if you're having a lot of problems with um, harmony in your relationship, then you're in the wrong relationship. It's that simple. And... Thinking that somehow it's some passionate relationship just prolongs the agony. Another pitfall, five of swords. This, to me, see they're both fives. Fives are cards that relate to, can relate to chaos. Um, and with the five of swords, there can be underhanded behavior, even lying about somebody's slanderous behavior. But regardless, this can this is the card of the I can't I can never remember that phrase. It's like winning at somebody else's expense. Okay, and that is never going to make you feel good at a core level. When when people think that the ends justify the means. So just be careful of that. If you're experiencing some sort of success, celebrate it, but don't get attached to it. And um, the other thing, too, is the pitfalls could be coming from other people. There could be people trying to undermine you because they're jealous. Don't stay above the fray. Don't get sucked into other people's envy and their negative perceptions. Knight of Wands. This is the Lothario card. Could be an actual Sagittarius man, but either way, it could be somebody that, I, I would say, good time Charlie, who is a lot of fun, is maybe very... Uh, sexy, you have good sexual chemistry, but they won't commit. And for Scorpio people, that is probably a nightmare because most of you want to have a very deep relationship connected on all levels. You don't want one night stands. 
Some people, you know, that's fine and dandy for them to have a one night stand, but you're not that person usually. So be careful of those types of people come into your life because you have to understand what you're getting yourself into and you can't have it both ways. How many people have one night stands and I'm going to call out women. How many women have one night stands hoping that it's going to turn into a permanent relationship? We're not talking about morality of of um, going to bed with somebody that you've just met. I'm not, I'm not even interested in that. I'm talking about in terms of what you hope to gain from it. And if you really have an ulterior motive, then don't do it in the first place. Don't go through life with ulterior motives. And that is kind of hilarious for Scorpios because you guys are consummate chess players and you may always have like ulterior motives. <laughs> So you got to watch for that because you're going to get burned if you do, or you might. Okay. Um, okay, I know. This card is actually the advice, and these are the outcome cards. Uh, when I saw them, they were, you know, like this, and I thought that there was something wrong with it. The advice was just one card. The advice is represented by the Emperor card. This is a card of control over your life. Now, some of you may be coming from a situation where you have made a lot of changes and you are feeling like you're doing really well, but there may be one last thing that you need to be strong about. And maybe there's a habit that is keeping you back, that is interfering with your judgment in some cases, and that needs to be looked at. But the emperor is about somebody who really knows what they want, and you usually do, but sometimes things can get cloudy when there are things that interfere with your best self. So I'm just going to leave it at that and allow you to decide what could be going on in that regard. And the outcome, we got two outcomes here. The Queen of Swords, which is a card of head over heart, but not losing your heart. Not losing that part of you that is able to feel. But knowing what is good for you and what isn't good for you. So going back to the High Priestess and the what was the other card? The Queen of Cups. There could be something that comes out for you that is related to a relationship, for instance, that you did not know about. And now that you know, you have all, you know, this clarity to know for sure. Like if the Emperor card is people that need to get divorced, sometimes this can be a judge type of a person. So maybe with the Six of Swords, some of you are leaving a relationship but you haven't decided whether or not you're going to file for divorce you will decide that and you won't allow your sentimentality to get the best of you and you will make peace you'll be at peace with your decision it can also you know i was thinking that maybe for some people there is some kind of um child custody hearing where you need to, to iron out. Because that's why I said about loose ends from last year. And maybe in some cases you have to allow this other person to have access to your child. And you, you might have been a bit bitter because of the way things ended up. And you did not want to do that. And you realize... This could be like putting aside your own emotions to do what is best for the, the other person, okay, for the child and for the other parent, and not allowing your emotions to run away with you, which is really important for Scorpio people. But I see here, and you know, the uh, also, too, if you, you know, if you've left and, and you're homesick. That could be about really looking at how, how much benefit it is 
to, you know, move and to broaden your horizons. You may s still have a little bit of sentimental feelings, but you're understanding the overall benefits to you. And the other card is the Ten of Cups, which is like, in the Minor Arcana, probably the one of the best emotional cards. This is a card of family harmony. So you may feel the sense of things being restored. Maybe there was some kind of a rift, and that is being healed. And also, this is a marriage card. So maybe that King of Cups person is the person that you have committed your life to. And eventually that could lead to a commitment of the highest order with this person. But overall, this is just a card of a lot of happiness, you know, like the pot at the end of the rainbow. And um, very good way to end 2018 reading for Scorpio. So I hope that you enjoyed this Scorpio, I wish you all the best in 2018. Take care. Bye.